How you deploy games and apps is a continued interest of mine. Today we're talking about creating your very own custom software installer on Windows. No, I'm not talking about making a Clip Team, Install Shield, or any other kind of branded installer. That information is already out there, and if you want an easy setup, that's the way to go. But typical installers look so boring. I prefer having complete control over the way it looks and operates. The installer is the first direct point of contact with your audience and you have the prime opportunity to make an impression. Maybe I have some fancy animations to add. I can add some of my game's characters or screenshots. I can even make a tiny gameplay preview or an interactive installation screen. The possibilities are endless. And on that note, you can do literally anything that those pro installers charge you hundreds of dollars for if you're willing to do research and put in the work. The common perception out there is that editing the registry is so dangerous that you can brick your computer and you'll have to reinstall Windows with the slightest error. I don't know how you can actually fuck up that bad. You have to enter very deliberate keys to ruin Windows. With that being said, to follow along you should already be comfortable with the registry editor, the command line, and creating scene2d.ui apps with libgdx. This is not for computer rookies, and this only applies to Windows platforms. You may also want to refer to my previous videos on Java Packager, Splash Screens, and creating game launchers. To begin, we're going to create three different libgdx projects, game, installer, and uninstaller. There's way too much code to review here, so make sure to refer to the source example in the description. The game project is, as you guessed it, your actual game. I'm using the libgdx sample for this tutorial. We don't need to add much here except for the Gradle tasks to invoke Java Packager. One note to add to my previous video is that I need to add a line to enable a splash screen. Splash screens enabled in the JAR manifest do not work when run from the Java Packager. I'm also adding code to my core project to close the splash screen when the game is up and running. Let's make sure to name the jar file something unique so that it won't get confused with the other jars later. Don't forget to create icon files. Run task create final app bundle. The installer project is where the real meat of this example is. The setup is similar to our game project with a new splash screen and icon. But we also want to add Gradle tests to make our executable user account control compatible. Your installer needs to be able to write to the programs folder and edit the registry. You can't do that without admin privileges. The preliminary step is to install the Windows SDK on your production computer. You only need to install the options Windows SDK Signing Tools and Windows SDK for UWP Managed Apps. Make sure that the path to 64-bit mt.exe is correct in your Gradle task. mt.exe applies an XML manifest to our Java Packager executable. We need to write the manifest first. This requests the administrator privileges. Save that in your desktop folder of the installer project.
If we run task apply UAC manifest, our project will build The splash image needs to be placed alongside the jar in the distribution app folder. And you'll notice that the EXE now has the UAC shield on it. Opening the file results in that annoying nag screen that users just click through blindly nowadays. If it really matters to you, read the resources on Windows SDK about signing your apps. Now it's time to design the installer. It's up to you to create your user interface, or you can just copy mine for now. I wrote this with the LWJGL3 backend, so I can move it around like this. I'm using a properties file to hold common values used throughout various screens and the registry. I use fade actions from table to table. It's common to have an end user license agreement screen. If you're really evil, you can make it so that the user has to read the whole agreement before they can proceed. The location table reads from the registry to determine where the default programs folder is on the end user system. There's a helper method in the source code to make this a little easier. For the directory selection, we're going to use tiny file dialogs. This is included with LWJGL, so we just need to make sure to import it in our root build.gradle. We can specify what files are going to be installed by including them in our assets. Create a folder named installation. Anything we place here will be copied to our target install path. That means I can copy my game's entire distribution folder here and it will be installed on our client's computer. If you think about it though, our installer package is going to be huge because we're going to include both the Java runtime for the game and the Java runtime for the installer. The trick is to just copy the installer's Java runtime to the target path at installation. So, the only files you really need here are the exe and the files in the app folder. The technique I use for this requires that you do not include any empty folders in here. The installation table has all of the code to do the actual work. It collects all the installation files from the assets folder and the runtime files. The total file sizes are added up ahead of time and we'll copy the files to the target path byte by byte in a separate thread so we can update our progress bar. I also update my animation with this calculated value. If the user presses the cancel button, the thread is paused. If they choose to quit, the thread is stopped and any installed files are removed. We also read the registry for the start menu and desktop paths to create shortcuts for our app. The excellent MS Links library allows us to create shortcut LNK files. Writing to the registry is actually the easy part. We need to write values for our uninstaller program so that Windows will know where to look later if the user wants to uninstall. There is extra information in here for older Windows OSs but check the Nullsoft article on the subject in the description for the required and suggested values. We need to also automatically write a log of the installed files so our uninstaller can erase the right files. Our final screen allows us to launch the game or quit per your typical installer. You can add a readme file here or whatever you see fit. Writing the uninstaller should be a bit simpler, albeit a bit more indirect. Similar to the installer project, we need Gradle commands for the Java Packager and UAC. 
we make sure that the jar is named uniquely. Our interface only has a couple buttons. It reads the uninstall log to delete the files, but we can't delete files while they are in use. The uninstaller uses the Java runtime files. The secret is to generate delete commands in a batch file and execute them outside of Java. The batch file has a built-in hack to delay execution for 5 seconds, allowing the libgdx window to close completely. We can put it all together now. Run apply UAC manifest for the uninstaller project. Copy the executable and the contents of the app folder into the installation folder of the installer app. We should have both the game and uninstaller files in here along with their associated splash images. Run apply UAC manifest for the installer project. That's it. Zip this up and send this to your players. They'll be able to install, play, and uninstall when they want to move on. Creating your own installer is an advanced operation and not for casual use. However, it adds a unique touch to your software and gives you the freedom to create whatever you need without limitation. You can always expand its functionality to match that of paid software. Don't listen to the scare tactics if you have the means and desire to do it on your own.